Okay, A3, let's look at this final review here. I've started with some easier things. These are most recent. They are all on your test. Please pay attention. If you need to take notes, take notes, okay? I'm gonna start here just so I can erase. I have a triangle. It has a 60 degree angle and a 65 degree angle. What is the measurement of that angle? How do I find out? What fact do I know? I know that when you take any triangle, no matter its size, no matter, it, no matter how big the angles or small the angles, when you add the three angles together, they always equal what? 180 degrees. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna say 60 plus 65. That equals 125 degrees. Now what do I do? Take 180 degrees and subtract 125 degrees from it. When I do that, okay, I'm gonna get 55 degrees. This, this angle is 55 degrees. Look at this triangle. I have a triangle. I know that the measurement is 35. I want you to tell me what the measurement of C is. How do I determine that? I have to know two facts in order to solve this problem. Fact number one, I have to know what? I have to know at least two of the angles to find the third one. This one is 35 degrees. This is the one I'm looking for. Fact number one, how many degrees are in this angle? 90 degrees. How do you know it is 90 degrees? That chalk is driving crazy, guys. It's squeaky, ugh, all right? All right, now let's try that again. This is 90 degrees, how did you know that? Because it's a right angle. And right angles make a corner, and in math, they are always denoted on your book or in your paper or on your test by having a square in them. That means they form an exact square, like a corner of a room. They are 90 degrees, okay? So now I can say 35 degrees plus 90 degrees. When I add them together, I get 125 degrees. What do I do? Because it goes back to the second fact that I know. What's the second fact? All triangles, when you add the sums of a triangle, the sum is 180 degrees. 180 degrees minus 125. We're going to mark this out, make it 7. 10 minus 5 is 5. 7 minus 2 is 5. This angle is 55 degrees. Okay? Let's look at these. What is an acute angle? An acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle, an angle that is more than 90 degrees. A straight angle is exactly 180 degrees. And a right angle is exactly 90 degrees. You will need to know those four definitions. Acute, obtuse, straight and right. You will also need to know the four types of triangles. Let me turn this just slightly so you can see it better. Okay, there, there are four kinds of triangles. You will need to know them by definition. Okay, a right triangle is a triangle that has one right angle. The second is an isosceles triangle. I'm going to show you a picture. An isosceles triangle, as you can see here in our picture, it has two sides that are congruent. What does the word congruent mean? It means they're exactly the same. Then we have our scalene triangle. A scalene triangle has no congruent sides. When I look at this triangle, each side has a different length. It means none of the angles are gonna be the same. The last one is an equilateral triangle. That makes, should be very easy because of the word equal. It means all the sides are equal. So you have equilateral, all the sides are equal. A right triangle, it has a right angle. The only two you really have to think about are isosceles and scalene. Isosceles has two sides that are congruent and a scalene has no sides that are congruent. You will need to know those, tech, those uh, triangles by definition for your test. Let's look at this last problem for today. It is an interest problem. If you put $2,000 into the bank and the bank agrees to pay you at the rate of 5% interest, you're going to leave it there for two years. 
and it's gonna be compounded annually. How do you solve that? Well, first you have to know your formula. Interest equals the rate times the principal or the amount. Okay, how do I find my interest? Take my rate times principal. What's the other word for principal? Amount, okay? So we don't know what our interest is, that's what we're looking for, but our rate is 5%. Change 5% to a decimal. It is 0 0.05. What is the principal? The principal is $2,000, okay? So now let's multiply. Five times zero, five times zero, five times zero, five times 10. Where do I need to put my decimal? Right there, it's after the 100. How much money is in the account at the end of the first year? We're gonna take our principal for our first year, we're gonna take the principal, which is the $2,000, we're gonna add the interest we earn, which is $100. We're gonna add them together. He has $2,100. What happens, because we're staying there for two years compounded interest. We go back and we say, now we have $2,100 or $2,100. We're gonna multiply that by 0 0.05, still the same rate, okay? So now, for those of you that struggle with multiplication, I'm gonna show it to you over here. We're gonna multiply. Okay, and then we're gonna move in. One, two places, so how much did he earn? $105 in interest. At the end of his second year, how much money does he have? Take his sec the second year principal, 2,100, add to it the principal that he got or the interest he got, now he has $2,205. That is the answer. How do you find interest? Interest equals the rate times the principal. What's another? The principal means the amount of money that you're putting in, okay? If it's compounded annually, take that interest you earn, add it to the amount you had to get your new amount. Use that amount to start your second year, okay? Again, if you have any questions, please send me a text. This is, you're out of time after this one, okay? All right, have a good day, guys.